Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making news this morning, President Biden gets ready to have a high stakes meeting with the leader of Russia as the NATO summit winds down. Plus, the latest on the coronavirus, health officials are now more worried about a variant which now accounts for nearly 10% of COVID cases in the U.S. We had some big showers and thunderstorms in the area yesterday evening, created a couple of thunderstorm warnings. Any leftovers out there? And what's happening in the tropics? We'll check in with Mike in a moment. Good morning. It is Tuesday, June 15th. Thanks for joining us. Let's go straight to Mike. Get an update on what's happening out there right now. It's not a bad morning out there. Mid 70s, which is kind of par for the course this time of year, right? Just about. Yeah, and we did have uh, some of those storms yesterday. Nothing is, uh, is out there right now. They died down overnight, but there may be a little bit of a repeat in the, later on this afternoon. So and uh, there is a new tropical storm. Not where you think, though. It's way off the East Coast. Doesn't even have any concern with us. But uh, first of all, right now it is very nice nice out there for this time of year, 76 degrees, a couple of notches above where it uh, where it should be in the normal low temperature. Dew points are in the 60s primarily. So with that, there's yes, it's humid out there, but not enough humidity really to give us any sort of a heat index right now. And so it it's what it feels like is what the thermometer reads as of right now. Uh, mold is on the low side. Pigweed is also very, very low. And throughout the rest of today, we are going to make it up to 95, hit 96 yesterday. And of course, those heat index readings, even though humidity will drop a little bit, there's still going to be enough humidity out there to make it feel like it's going to be about 100. And also, there will be one or two of those storms popping up. Again, the odds of rain are not that great, but if you see some of these storms, they could kind of blow up and become, uh, you know, a couple of heavy downpours, which wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing if you get some of that rain, but also uh, got to watch out if one or two of them become on the, the strong side. Maybe the same thing tomorrow. Check out the tropics, what's going on down there in the Gulf of Mexico, and um, looks like maybe cranking up the heat a little bit. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you very much, Mike. Now to a deadly shooting at a Georgia supermarket where law enforcement says a gunman refused to wear a mask. It comes as we learn about a rise in COVID infections in several states, just as a more dangerous variant of the virus takes root. ABC's Faith Abube has the latest. This morning, police in Georgia investigating a deadly dispute over a mask. I don't know what the world is coming to, period. They say a customer opened fire at this grocery store near Atlanta when a cashier asked him to cover his face. The gunfire leaving the cashier dead and a deputy and the store security guard wounded. Today, California is dropping its mask and social distancing mandates for vaccinated people as cases decline in most of the country. But COVID infections are still rising in these eight states. According to the CDC, the vaccination rate in all of these states, except Hawaii, is below the national average. It comes as health officials grow increasingly worried about a more dangerous variant of the coronavirus known as as Delta, first seen in India. It now accounts for nearly 10% of COVID cases in the U.S. The Delta variant so serious, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has now delayed the U.K.'s reopening plans. The good news? Doctors say the vaccines offer significant protection against the variant. Faith Abube, ABC News, New York. At the NATO summit, President Biden and NATO allies are warning about China's global influence and calling Russia a threat to European and Atlantic security. During a meeting set for tomorrow, the president says all NATO leaders are supportive of his plan to press Russian President Vladimir Putin to halt Russian originated cyber attacks against the West. NATO leaders have also declared China a constant security challenge and say the Chinese are working to undermine global order. Uh, President Biden also plans to confront Beijing on China's trade, military and human rights practices. In northern Illinois, emergency crews have been battling massive fires at a chemical plant that exploded. That explosion sent huge plumes of thick black smoke into the air and prompted officials to order an evacuation of residents and businesses near Rockton. Officials estimate about 1,000 people are affected by the evacuation order. There have been no reports of injuries, and the company says everyone on site is, quote, safe and accounted for. The plant manufactures grease products, lubricants, and other fluids. That video is amazing. The Biden administration says more than 1.2 million Americans have signed up for Affordable Care Act coverage on the federal exchange through the end of May. But the pace of signups during the special enrollment period, which runs through mid-August, is slowing down. The president reopened enrollment in mid-February to help provide coverage to the uninsured during the ongoing pandemic. 
Biden administration officials are continuing to promote health care subsidies contained in the $1.9 trillion relief package. Expanded assistance lasts for two years. The administration is looking to make it permanent under the American Families Plan. An Associated Press investigation has found that at least 1,900 U.S. military firearms were either lost or stolen over the last decade. These weapons are intended for war, but some have ended up on America's streets. Army pistols, for example, were used in violent crimes, including shootings and robberies. The investigation shows that pistols, machine guns, and automatic assault rifles vanished from military armories, supply warehouses, Navy warships, and elsewhere. Security lapses included unlocked doors, sleeping troops, and a surveillance system that didn't record. Pentagon and armed services say the missing firearms are a tiny fraction of the military stockpile and say that some weapons are recovered. Tuesday, it is June 14th. Glad you're with us. About 75 degrees. And still ahead, a closer look at which sunscreens work the best this year when it comes to protecting your skin. And we now know who the Texas Longhorns will be facing in their first game in Omaha. Plus, a look at the week ahead for San Antonio Missions Baseball. And taking a look outside with a live cam. It's uh, still a little humid out there. Not as humid as yesterday, though. And we are expecting possibly some rain here and there. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Time for a look at morning sports at just about 439. The Texas Longhorns headed to the College World Series for the 37th time. That's after being able to sweep South Florida in the NCAA Super Regional held in Austin with game two Sunday night at Dish Falk Field. Longhorns are set to take on Mississippi State on Sunday in Omaha. That game is set for 6 p.m. San Antonio Missions back at it tonight. This week, the Missions stay at Wolf Stadium for another home series. This time, they welcome the Northwest Arkansas Naturals to town. The series runs tomorrow through Sunday. It's also $2 Tuesdays at Wolf. That means $2 parking, reserve tickets, domestic beer, pizza, and more. And I was just re reading the Express News website this morning that, you know, we've gotten back to normal in yes. most instances. Wolf Stadium at full capacity now. Oh, that's great. For news. some of these local games. That's great news. Good to see. And uh, discounts also. Not bad. I know, right? <laughs> Two dollar Tuesdays at Wolf Stadium. Very good. Right now it's about 440, about 75 degrees. And still ahead as the sun is blazing down outside. That means it's now more important to wear sunscreen. We're going to tell you which sunscreen is going to offer you the most protection. And next, a closer look at more reports of passengers behaving badly on airline flights. And welcome back. It's about 4.43 now. The FAA is out with new numbers on disruptive passengers on flights. The agency says there have been 3,000 incidents so far this year. ABC's Gio Benitez has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, the FBI is investigating that scare in the air when an off-duty flight attendant on leave allegedly threatened to take down the plane. The FBI looking at this new video as passengers and crew members restrained 34-year-old Stefan Jamar Duncan, who's accused of making terroristic threats and assaulting two flight attendants. The FAA now telling ABC News it has received more than 3,000 reports of unruly passengers on planes. The overwhelming majority are passengers refusing to wear a mask. We're on course in this year to have almost as many events as we have seen of unruly passengers in the entire course of aviation. And coming up at 7 a.m., an ABC News exclusive. George Stephanopoulos goes one-on-one -on -one with the CEO of Delta in a live interview. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. Now that we're spending more time outdoors, it means time to slather on the sunscreen. It's that time. 12 on your sides, Marilyn Morris shows us which sunscreens get top test scores. A painful sunburn is no day at the beach, so Consumer Reports put sunscreens to the test. To check SPF, they applied dozens of lotions and sprays. After a tub soak and exposure to simulated sunlight, experts checked for redness. 
The lotion getting top scores? Equate Sport Lotion SPF 50 from Walmart. It won't burn your budget either. The spray that came out on top? Hawaiian Tropic Sport with SPF 30. When it comes to applying sunscreen, one common mistake is not using enough. The right way to apply a lotion sunscreen is to use a teaspoon per body part that's not covered by clothing. Sprays can be convenient, but tricky. It's harder to tell if you're covered. When you use a spray, you want to hold the can four to six inches away from your skin and spray until your skin glistens. Then rub it in to make sure you get even coverage and repeat again just to be safe. Never spray your face. Instead, spray into your hands and rub it onto your face. And be careful using spray on children because they're more likely to inhale the mist. All of CR's top-rated sunscreens contain chemical active ingredients. But if you prefer a mineral or natural sunscreen, their tests found California Kids Super Sensitive Tinted Lotion, SPF 30+, plus, provided adequate protection. When choosing, look for the words broad spectrum. That means it also protects against UVA rays. Those are the ones that can lead to cancer and wrinkles. The American Academy of Dermatology recommends an SPF of at least 30. Doctors also say the best sunscreen is the one you actually use. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. In your morning consumer headlines, federal regulators are now investigating Amazon Electronics after some of the products reportedly burst into flames. The Consumer Product Safety Commission is looking into at least eight products sold under the Amazon Basics brand electronics, including battery chargers, surge protectors, and a voice-activated microwave that consumers said caught fire. Other buyers reported products that melted or exploded. Amazon declined to comment on the investigation, but said it evaluates every report of safety issues and takes the appropriate action. Nearly two thirds of millennials are feeling some buyer's remorse after buying a new home. That's according to a bank rate survey that shows about 64% have regrets after a home purchase compared with 33% of baby boomers. Millennial regrets are either typically centered on finances or on the amount of work needed for maintenance. 446 and Mike Ostrade joins us now as we cruise into our Tuesday morning and boy the storms really got active last night. Yeah, I was yes. just watching TV and one thunderstorm warning after another kept popping up. Yeah, they they were really uh, kind of kind of going at it there. We had all mm -hmm. that, you know, the humidity and you could just see things kind of blossom up because for a while during the day yesterday, about midday, there wasn't a cloud in the sky. Yeah. True. And then, you know, clouds started to form up just a little bit. But back to Maryland's story about sunscreen. Yes, sir. Yes. And, and like the experts always say, you know, a lot of people, well, it's sunny out, so we're sun even on a cloudy all the day, time. Mm -hmm. then oh, you yeah. Because, you know, you're not going, oh, the sun's hot. Yeah, but it, those rays get through. That's a fact. My The worst sunburn I've ever gotten was on an overcast day at yes. South Padre Island. Yep. <laughs> I will never forget it. I think I slept in the bathtub that night. Ouch. Yeah, yeah. that's the sneaky sun. Yeah. And like my dermatologist said, just every single day, no matter what. Just yes. make it kind of, you know, on your face especially because mm -hmm. that's the one thing exposed. Just yes, sure. Your, your Good advice. For that. Yep. So, all right, they're talking about those storms off in the distance. I mean, there's those beautiful blue skies that we had and those things really started to uh, pop up and fire up. There weren't many of them out there, but the ones that were out there, they were definitely making their mark. Right now, it is a very tranquil morning and here's the uh, satellite radar picture going back 12 hours and yeah, and there was nothing and these things started to blossom up. A couple of computer models did handle this very well. That rapid update model had one or two of those popping up yesterday, and they obviously decided to uh, grow fairly well, some moving into the portions of the hill country, and now things have settled down. Now, here's the same computer model that was showing some of those storms yesterday, and it's got the same scenario today. One or two of them kind of scattered about the area, and they may indeed kind of blow up if uh, you know the atmosphere is fairly ripe. Once the sun goes down, they will start to die down. But again, they're going to be few and far between. If you get one of them, the, on the plus side, there's going to be some very nice uh, rain from some of these storms because we could obviously use some even after all the rain that we had, but and things are drying out. Now, once again, it's going to be few and far between, so that's the big problem. Okay, down to the south and southeast of us, down there in the Bay of Campeche, it's not anything that really looks all that great right now, but 
Hurricane Center does say that this does have a pretty good chance in the next four to five days of developing into a, a tropical system and just the uh, the G whiz for today. There's tropical storm bill, but as you can see, that thing is just racing out there into the uh, North Atlantic. So here's another computer model, and this one goes a little bit further into the future. It also has a couple of those showers and thunderstorms trying to pop up later on this afternoon. Uh, tomorrow afternoon, same situation. Now let's start to work our way out to the south and east going in toward the latter part of the week and here's that system if it does indeed develop but whether it does not it's still going to continue to work its way up to the north primarily so this is really not going to have any impact on our weather maybe a couple of uh, wraparound showers especially well off to the east and this is going to be later on into the weekend which is kind of doubtful but that will continue to move off into the uh, southeastern united states so again the system down there in the bay of Campeche does not as things are going right now, have any sort of impact on our weather. 90 at noon today, partly cloudy skies. We are going for 95 again, so a couple of notches above the normal high temperature, the, the average, and a couple of those thunderstorms are going to be popping up around there. Very few and far between. Most of us won't see anything, but if you do, could have a decent shower, maybe a stronger storm out of it as well. Uh, is this called summer? Yeah, it, when it's really consistent like this and sort of cut and paste each and every day. Tomorrow we'll have a couple of thunderstorms perhaps left over on Thursday, just one or two of them out there. And then the weekend is going to start to heat up. We're looking at some uh, upper 90s. That's here in town by the weekend. And of course, Sunday's Father's Day and summer <laughs> begins. So. Yes, it is. Yes. The second day of, of reminder. I forgot to tell you guys, I was at Lock and Terra on Saturday or Sunday. Uh -huh. And I just was walk, watching, walking by the watch case and it's like they'd had a run on watches. And I said, are you guys running low? And they go, no, we just got hit for Father's Day. <gasps> really? I mean, that most of the watches were sold out. What day was that? That was Saturday or Sunday well, this past good. weekend. Well, that's good. People yeah. are on top of their game. They're, that they're shopping early. Yeah. That and neckties. Wow. Which watch did you get us? I did not get you to watch this no, year, Mike. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, I bought the whole case. Don't buy yourself a Father's Day gift. <laughs> get the ones that are in the Happy Meals. He'll be fine. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, I got you covered then. <laughs> what was, the, remember, what was the, the, the swatch years ago? Oh, I love what those. those? I yeah. Back when we were really, really young. Yeah, I, I had a lot of those. <laughs> Some people wore two or three at a time. So. Yeah, I did yeah. that. You did? Yes. <laughs> every every color. Four, 451 on your Tuesday time zones? No. I'm kidding. No. 451 on your Tuesday morning about 76 degrees. And coming up next, hosting drama continues on the new season of The Bachelorette Plus. Can the pop group BTS continue to keep their new song in the number 1 spot? Here are your lottery numbers. Pick 3 888 Fireball 7. Daily four numbers 5298 Fireball 2. Cash 5 14 16 18 22 24. Four. Texas two step 11, 20, 21, 29, bonus ball nine. The new host of The Bachelorette react to the newest episode, plus, first look at the second season of The Morning Show. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. I'm here to find my future husband. Hi. On last night's Bachelorette, Katie Thurston got a little closer to finding her soulmate with some help from the show's new co-host, Tasha Adams and Caitlin Bristow. And I got a chance to ask them who they think should be the new permanent host of the franchise. I mean, of course, I mean, it should obviously, be us, but... Yeah. Um, <laughs> with longtime host Chris Harrison's official departure from the franchise last week, Adams and Bristow told me that even if it's not them taking over, they'd like it to be someone from within Bachelor Nation. The conversations that we have with Katie are probably very different than the conversations that she could have with anybody else just yeah. because we've been there and we could actually relate to it. Everything changed in a minute. The whole world changed. I thought we were a team. It's our first look at season two of The Morning Show. Apple TV Plus dropping the trailer for the Jennifer Aniston Reese Witherspoon drama. And we get a glimpse of new star Juliana Margulies joining the cast. But you'll have to wait until mid-September for the new season. Let's go! The Butter hasn't gone soft. The BTS single Butter notching another week at number one on the Billboard Hot 100 singles chart. It's Butter's third week on top. One more, and it'll be the longest running number one for BTS. And happy birthday, Monica. Friend star Courtney Cox is 57 today, Man, I'm while so rapper and actor here. Ice Cube is 52. You know, uh, and that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. And time now is 4.56 and about 76 degrees out there. Still ahead on this morning's show, an update on President Biden's Europe trip and the NATO summit. What the president say, is saying about China's global influence and Russia's threat to European and Atlantic security. 
Plus, some cell phone companies are offering some nice discounts for those who are vaccinated against COVID-19. Details ahead in Tech Bites. And you may have noticed more and more people are vacationing. Travel insurance has become a popular, given, become popular rather, given the pandemic is still going on around the world. Ahead on GMSA at 6 this morning, what you need to know about the fine print before you spend your hard-earned cash. And taking a look out at Transguide, there's a situation there at I-35 in Engle. We'll be checking in with Samuel King this morning after the break. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. ERCOT is urging Texans to reduce their electrical use through Friday immediately. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. Why ERCOT says grid conditions are tight. President Biden wraps up his first NATO summit in Brussels. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting in Washington. Coming up, what to expect from the upcoming sit down with Russian President Vladimir Putin. And outside with live cam, beautiful shot of downtown San Antonio. We've actually gone up a degree in the last half hour. We'll check in with Mike Ostrage in just a moment. Hi, good morning. It is Tuesday, June 15th. Thanks for joining us. And I know we were expecting a chance of rain yesterday, mm -hmm. but I, I still forgot about it. And I was, I, w I didn't have the TV on and I was just doing stuff around the house and it was loud because my, my husband was cooking and I'm like, is that rain? Was it raining at your place? <laughs> yes. Really? A lot. Okay. A lot. It was coming down. Well, some folks did get some storms. Uh, I know places like Seguin got hammered last night with them. Um, very isolated thunderstorms. Mike, all that's gone for now, right? Yeah, all that kind of died off once the sun went down. There's still going to be a couple of them out there again today. Uh, few and far between, but if you get one of them, yeah, you might have some uh, pretty decent thunderstorms that are going to be popping up. We're at 75 degrees right now. The dew point is at 68, that bottom number, which uh, is not bad this time of year. We don't have really a heat index to deal with as of right now, so it just feels like 75 degrees. Add 20 to that later on today. We'll be up around the mid-90s again. Got up to 96 yesterday, and yeah, the humidity made it feel like it was well into the hundreds. That's going to be the situation again. And notice how it's just about a 20% chance for, again, a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms to pop up later on. And the aquifer did drop down eight-tenths of a foot in yesterday's reading. The allergens, everything's still on the light side. It was the ground continues continues to dry out. Mold is definitely low. Here's a look back 12 hours ago on the satellite radar picture. And again, there wasn't really anything, hardly any clouds in the sky early afternoon. And you saw a few clouds developing and they blossomed up. And yeah, I got some pretty good thunderstorms that uh, started to pop up around here, which computer models handled fairly well yesterday as far as one or two of them. And that's the situation again today. So it is warm and yeah, on the humid side, not oppressively humid though. A couple of those thunderstorms pop up later on again most of us won't see anything except for hot temperatures mid 90s it'll feel like it's about 100 or more than that more of the same tomorrow again a stray thunderstorm or two and then it's just going to be hot the rest of the week and probably getting hotter as we go in toward the weekend details coming up in a couple of minutes traffic authority sam king is once again here on an early tuesday morning what's going on thank you very much mike good morning Stephen will be back tomorrow so he has a couple of days off and we're watching this situation in comal county some construction this morning on i-35 at ingles so you can still see uh the vehicles there on the scene letting you know about that construction and people driving around it this morning. Now here's a look at that area on the map, or at least close to that area. You see traffic down to 28 miles per hour in that area, so that's something to keep in mind this morning. Otherwise, looking at the rest of the region, we had some construction out here in 1604 overnight. That seems not to be affecting things too much, but we are watching south side here in San Antonio. This is 35 northbound at Zarzamora. We've been seeing some delays uh, in this area uh, overnight here, and those continue northbound now at Zarzamora, down to 39 miles per hour approaching the intersection. Also, a crash reported there, uh, Commercial Avenue, just south of Military. So something to keep in mind this morning. Looking at those inbound travel times, mentioned uh, coming in from New Braunfels, 27 minutes right now on 35. Smooth sailing otherwise, except for that construction uh, there south of New Braunfels. Half an hour coming in from Seguin, 24 minutes on I-10. From Bernie, we'll have another update coming up. Mark, Stephanie. Thank you, Samuel. ERCOT is asking Texans to reduce their electricity use immediately and through Friday. The announcement was made yesterday. Sarah Costa is live downtown with that conservation alert that was issued. And Sarah, what does this mean for Texans? 
Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. It it doesn't mean we're at that urgent level that we saw back in February with the winter storm where we had those rolling outages that ERCOT says that would be the last resort if the demand gets too close to the state's supply level. But ERCOT says that the demand on the power grid should decrease by the end of the week. This after some power plants were facing some mysterious outages yesterday. The issue is putting a strain on the state's power grid. ERCOT predicted record demand, but with so many power plants coming off the line unexpectedly, ERCOT put out a call for conservation. It's a request we often see in the summer months, but ERCOT's vice president of grid planning and operations said, quote, this is unusual for this early in the summer season, end quote. The grid operator noted they are seeing three to four times the amount of plants undergoing outages as activity fluctuates. More plants are expected to come back online throughout the week. So what can you do to help conserve? You can do a couple of things. Set your thermostat to 78 degrees or higher. Every degree of cooling increases your energy use by 6 to 8 percent. Turn off lights and pool pumps and avoid using large appliances like ovens, washing machines and dryers. If you don't need something, ERCOT is asking you to turn it off and unplug it if possible. Now, CPS also released a statement yesterday asking uh, customers to conserve. They said the best time to conserve especially is between 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. Live from downtown, I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. With the heat in play and conservation efforts, the city of San Antonio is opening cooling centers. Today, some centers are set to open as early as 7 in the morning. They are going to be centers across the city, open during various hours all week long. You can find the cooling center nearest you right now on KSET.com. You could also call 311 for more information. If you need a ride, Via Metropolitan Transit is offering fare free service to City of San Antonio cooling centers beginning today. Complimentary tips are available on any regular Via, Via Link, or Via Trans service. Passengers should inform the bus operator they're traveling to a cooling center when they get on board. Via Trans customers will be allowed to make same day reservations for cooling center destinations only. To plan your trip, download the free Via Go mobile app, visit viainfo.net or call 362-2020 for more information. City of San Antonio's Emergency Preparedness Committee is pushing the release of their winter storm response findings back to next week as they work out the final parts of the report. In those findings, people will see recommendations the committee has, like addressing the statewide regulatory system, better communication with customers, and how to make sure there is an even spread should power outages occur to develop uh, the outage system, sorry, the they call it an automated uh, system, so that it works when we need to do this type of what they call load shed, this type of reduction in, in demand, uh, to make sure it works equitably and, uh, and for them to be able to demonstrate that it works. Also in the findings, people will see how SAWS, a San Antonio water system, responded to the winter storm and what that public utility could do to improve. This morning, President Biden in Brussels wrapping up his meeting with NATO leaders. Their talks centered on threats posed by China and Russia. Those talks coming just a day before Biden's high stakes sit down with Russian President Vladimir Putin, their first ever meeting. ABC's Ike Jachi is in Washington with the latest. President Biden reaffirming America's commitment to the leaders of NATO. Everyone in that room today understood the shared appreciation quite frankly, that America is back. In Brussels, the president with NATO leaders discussing several topics, including climate change, China, and Russia. President Biden calling the day productive, a stark contrast to the contentious NATO meetings during the Trump administration. The former president threatening to pull out of NATO, calling it obsolete. NATO leaders eager to listen to Biden's approach. When we stand together, we can overcome any threat to our security. Overnight, the allied nations releasing a joint statement, naming China a new security threat, calling out its assertive behavior. Another pressing threat, Russia. President Biden preparing to meet Putin Wednesday in Geneva, calling him a worthy adversary. Biden speaking with NATO leaders who expressed their support. Every world leader here thanked me for meeting with Putin now. President Biden planning to discuss several issues, including Putin's election meddling and the recent cyber attacks originating in Russia. I'm going to make clear to President Putin that 
There are areas where we can't cooperate if he chooses. And if he chooses not to cooperate and acts in a way that he has in the past relative to cybersecurity and some other activities, then we will respond. We will respond in kind. According to Axios, President Biden was advised by a group of Russia experts on both sides of the aisle not to hold a joint press conference so that Putin won't have the opportunity to upstage their private talks. Aika Jachi, ABC News, Washington. And time now is 5.09 and about 77 degrees out there. YouTube is known for its videos and all the ads that come with them, but we'll tell you why YouTube is banning some of those ads coming up. Also next, an update on what Texas medical professionals are saying about staying safe from COVID-19, even if you've been vaccinated. And outside with live cam, Mike Osterhage is back with uh, an eye on the tropics, which have gotten very active in the last few days. He'll have more on that. We're going to check back in with Samuel King in for Stephen on traffic. It may seem like the coronavirus pandemic is coming to an end. You shouldn't let your guard down just yet. The CDC says unvaccinated people should continue to wear masks and practice social distancing. Dr. S. Weasley Long, a researcher at Houston Methodist Hospital, says whether you have gotten your shot or not, you should still be careful. Although most data suggests vaccinated people are unlikely to spread the virus if infected. Long says if you are spending time with someone that is high risk or immunocompromised, it would be good to wear a mask to help protect them as well. Experts say bottom line, it's important to wear masks even after being vaccinated until the chance of catching COVID or any of its variants has significantly dropped. More pop-up clinics will be opening up today to help provide more access to vaccines. First ones open up at 10 this morning. First Church of the Nazarene. We have a full list of clinics on our website at ksat.com. And time now is 514 and about 77 degrees out there. And next on TMSA, we'll tell you which cell phone company is offering discounts if you can show that you have been vaccinated. Plus details on why YouTube is banning certain types of advertisements from the most popular spots on its homepage. You clean dishes as you cook to save time and stay ahead of the mess. But scrubbing still takes time. Now there's Dawn Power Wash Dish Spray, the faster, easier way to clean as you go. It cleans grease five times faster. On easy messes, just spray, wipe, and rinse. On tough messes, the spray activated suds cut through grease on contact without water. Just wipe and rinse. Get dishes done faster. Dawn Power Wash Dish Spray. Now available in free and clear. Introducing a Leave-X. It's fast, powerful, long-lasting relief with a revolutionary rollerball design. Because with the right pain reliever, life opens up. <laughs> a leave it and see what's possible. At Pure Leaf, saying no is the most important ingredient in making herbal iced tea. By selecting the finest botanicals, we say no caffeine, no stress, no better way to relax after a long day of anything. Pure Leaf, no is beautiful. 517, YouTube banning certain types of ads from the top of its homepage. ABC's Andrew Dembert has details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, YouTube revamping its ads. The site will no longer accept spots related to alcohol, gambling, politics, or prescription drug terms. YouTube says removing those subjects from its most prominent ad slot will lead to a better user experience. And Verizon is the latest company to reward Americans for getting vaccinated. Starting today, customers can get a 10% discount on accessories at Verizon stores or its website. They just have to complete an online questionnaire confirming they've received their COVID shot no proof is required. Finally, Baltimore's big mouth solution to keeping its waterfront clean. It's known as Mr. Trash Wheel, and it gobbles up floating debris with the help of moving water, a conveyor belt, and movable dumpsters. Since its debut, Mr. Trash Wheel has gotten rid of 3 million pounds of garbage. If only we had one of those for the streets of New York. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. That's right there on the Baltimore Inner Harbor. It's kind of the, the tourist spot in uh, downtown Baltimore. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. I guess we don't need that for the San Antonio River. I mean, maybe, maybe a smaller version. Now and <laughs> a then, tiny right? little, a yeah. tiny little version. Mm -hmm. yeah. Five eighteen on your Tuesday. Let's go ahead and check in with Samuel King. Good morning, Mr. Trashwheel Jr. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, I'd need it, but hopefully 
Napa. You will need some patience if you're at 35 in Ingle or just south of Ingle in the Comal County. Some construction continuing there on 35 and traffic uh, starting to build there. You can see sort of the uh, flashing lights and a diversion. If you drive on 35, you know of the construction in this area. And this morning, it uh, seems like we're seeing a few more disruptions than normal at this hour. So again, here's how that looks uh, on the map. Ingle is up here, but this is really this uh, construction zone here. Uh, past Country Club Boulevard and then approaching uh, the county line. So that's going to take some extra time, add some extra time to your commute this morning for coming out of Kumau County. Uh, take a look at the rest of the region. Things looking fine, even though even this area we were watching on 35 and the southwest side, everything looking better. Now we can take a look at that once you get out of Kumau County inside Loop 410. Oh, Thank you, Samuel. Did we lose did his we, microphone? Did, we, or did your microphone just go? I think we lost yeah. your microphone. Yeah. Oh, it just died? Oh, your microphone oh. died. Uh -oh. oh, no. Okay. Well, something, something weird we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. Hey, you know about that Mr. Trash thing? What's that? Wasn't this, did it say it removed 3 million pounds of trash? I don't remember the number. It was a lot. It though. was a lot. Which, yeah, okay, that's, that's, that's a big harbor. Yes. Okay, that's great. But the, I mean, the downside is people throw three million pounds of trash in the water. Oh, there. that is true. Mike. Well, there's that, <laughs> and I mean, uh, a lot of you know blows into the harbor mm -hmm. from those tourist areas, the the walkways around, because there's a big aquarium right there in Baltimore's inner harbor, everything like that. It's called trash cans, folks. Yes, sir. I mean, still <laughs> agree. I get your point. I don't mean to be pointy, but come on. Yes. <laughs> anyway, agree. All right. Uh, yesterday we had some of those storms, obviously that popped up. They passed, and. Uh, yeah, in behind, where's the pot of gold, though? And beautiful rainbow there in Seguin. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. All right, uh, it's pretty tranquil this morning. Humidity is not bad when you step outside. We really don't have that much of a heat index to deal with. And I know it's only one degree, but hey, when it comes to dew point temperatures, we'll take it down five in Pleasanton and uh, Gonzales, as well as Rock Springs, Del Rio. So. Just a little bit more pleasant around here this morning. And uh, as far as the humidity later on today, yes, it will drop down somewhat, but we still have these dew points at about 60 or above that mid 60s. Now it's a little bit more uh, pleasant in parts of the hill country. Humidity will come back up again. We continue to go through that daily cycle. More humidity in the morning, a little bit uh, lower in the afternoon, but still it doesn't take much when you have these temperatures getting up into the mid and upper 90s around here to get those heat index readings well up into the hundreds. So we are looking at mid upper 90s, low hundreds once again today all around the metropolitan area. A lot of upper 90s as well. And so we are going to be seeing a lot of uh, heat index readings well up into the low hundreds. 102 forecast here in town, 103 Gonzales, 105 in Laredo. And uh, just grin and bear it because this is definitely going to be sticking around. All right, as far as more rain chances today, few and far between. But like yesterday, if they pop up, you're going to have some you know, decent downpours, maybe a stronger thunderstorm as well. And that's going to be the case in through the uh, early evening hours. A little bit longer for further into the uh, future, first of all. Uh, it's going into tomorrow, about the same situation. Then uh, going into the latter part of the week, and just to shift off to the east a little bit more, and you can see this is the system down there in the Bay of Campeche, which now long range within the next about three to five days, Hurricane Center says it probably will develop into something tropical. And whatever the case may be, as of right now, a lot of computer models are definitely keeping it well off to the east of us. Maybe a few showers kind of wrapping around into our eastern counties by the weekend. That would be very few and far between again. And again, most of that is going to be staying well off to the east of us. So we don't have to worry about that thing down there in the uh, Bay of Campeche. So 90 at noon today, partly cloudy skies. Uh, again, it's going to be a situation like yesterday. Got some clouds this morning. A lot of those will go away by late morning and early afternoon. Then a few more develop, maybe a couple of thunderstorms popping up later on this afternoon. 95, but it'll feel like it's well up into about the 100 or low hundreds. Same thing tomorrow, maybe on Thursday, a leftover storm or two very consistent temperatures, although they do start to creep up a little bit more as we go in toward the weekend in the first part of next week and heat index readings will be well up there into the lower hundreds and you know even getting up to close to 105 as well by the weekend and the first part of next week. That's where you really got to take it easy. So do you have some uh, Father's Day gift ideas you can pass along this year? Oh gosh. Uh, uh, do we have time for it? Oh, we can make time. Yes. Pull up a chair. Uh, <laughs>
<laughs> Mike's full list on ksat.com. Clothes, power tools. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, that's true. You never have too many power tools, right? Never. Never. And, and the trick is, no matter what the task is, you have to buy a new tool. Mm -hmm. Some people take walks in the park to relax. Mike goes to Home Depot and Lowe's. <laughs> right now it's 524, about 76 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, why the new film In the Heights is facing some casting criticism. Plus a look at Brad Pitt's bullet train schedule. The long-awaited arrival on the big screen of a beloved Broadway musical has included a concert. Are we having microphone problems with me now? It sounds so weird. You're on. Keep talking. Okay. okay. All right. It just sounds It does to me. sound muffled. Yeah. Okay. We're, we're having check, audio check, issues. Check, check, check. Nope. <laughs> you're not on. <laughs> okay. CNN's Daniel has that and more in today's Hollywood Minute. Maybe you're right, Sonny. Call in the coroners. Maybe we're powerless. A corner full of foreigners. The musical In the Heights, about a vibrant Latino New York neighborhood, is drawing criticism for featuring darker skinned Afro Latinos in background and dance scenes, but not as main characters. The show's co creator, Lynn Manuel Miranda, posted an apology on Twitter, saying, In trying to paint a mosaic of this community, we fell short. I'm learning from the feedback. I thank you for raising it, and I'm listening. Bullet Train with Brad Pitt has an arrival date. Sony has scheduled the action thriller about five assassins who cross paths on a Japanese bullet train to pull into theaters on April 8, 2022. In difficult times, we all cling to the hope of a better future. Love Welcomes works with women and families who've been through the very worst of times. You Choose the Edge is teaming with Love Welcomes to give refugee women employment and support. They're creating and selling unique guitar straps which includes strips of refugee life vests worn as they cross the Mediterranean. More info at lovewelcomes.org. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. And time now is 528 and about 76 degrees right now. Still ahead on GMSA, while we've been blessed here in South Texas with recent rainfall, we're getting an update on other parts of the country dealing with major drought and even wildfires. Some big changes could be headed to Silicon Valley. Ahead on GMSA at 6, we're going to tell you about new legislation that could alter websites you use every day. The time has come to sign up for the new child tax credit from the IRS. We'll tell you how just ahead. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're in the upper 70s as we warm up to another nice hot day. Hey, good morning, everybody. With me, it's Tuesday. It is officially June 15th. Thanks for joining us this morning. And I hope maybe you're one of the lucky ones and you got some rain yesterday. We had a few showers and storms out there. Very, very widely scattered. Here's Mike with more on what to expect for the rest of the day. Yes, most folks did not see anything as far as rain, but if you got it, it was coming down pretty good. And there were actually a couple of stronger thunderstorms that did pop up. And then everything has settled down and it's a very tranquil morning. Temperature stands right now at 75 degrees. The dew point is 68, which means it's a little more pleasant when you step outside. We really don't have that much of a heat index to deal with as of right now. Light wind out of the north primarily at about uh, three miles per hour. And throughout the rest of today, we'll make it up to 90 at noon. Going to have uh, you know some leftover clouds this morning. They'll start to kind of clear out, then kind of pop back up again. And 95 for a high temperature later on today with a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms. Odds of seeing rain are not that great, but if you do, Again, could have a, a decent downpour out there. And of course, even though humidity is not going to be just off the charts with 95 degrees, still going to have heat index getting up there right around 100 or into the low hundreds. About the same situation tomorrow. And then it looks like we're going to start to uh, add on to those high temperatures as we head in toward the weekend. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Samuel King. Not a whole lot going on this morning, right? Not a whole lot, but we do have a big issue, Mike, up here in Comal County. If you've been uh, with us this morning, traffic continuing to build here. This is uh, the view from 35 at Ingle, and you can see now, you know, bumper to bumper traffic here. There's some construction uh, in this area. Now we're seeing definitely seeing some volume. So this is going to slow you down if you're coming out of New Braunfels this morning. Uh, this is a look at that on the map in this area down to 13 miles per hour. Doesn't get much faster once you get uh, past there. So keep that in mind if you are heading out of New Braunfels and Camal County this morning into uh, San Antonio and other areas. That's just something to keep in mind this morning. Looking at the big map, not too much uh, going on 
otherwise across uh, the area most of the other overnight construction uh, has been picked up for the morning of course we'll be back overnight now we're watching this travel time coming out of new braunfels 30 minutes now into downtown san antonio from new braunfels that has continued to increase otherwise we're normal 28 minutes coming out of seguin 28 minutes as well coming out of the pleasanton area on i-37 and we'll have another update coming up mark stephanie Thank you, Samuel. A dangerous heat wave baking much of the western U.S. with winds expected to ramp up in some areas. It's a bad combination as wildfires burn in a number of states as well. And as CNN's Brett Conway reports, firefighters worry they're in for another brutal wildfire season. Fire after fire after fire. Thousands of acres have been scorched in the western U.S. with no relief in sight. We're easily a month or more ahead of uh, fire weather conditions for this time of year. In fact, from the beginning of this year through June 11th, more than 833,000 acres have burned in nearly 27,000 fires across the U.S. During that same period last year, it was just over 658,000 acres in more than 20,000 fires. That's according to the National Interagency Fire Center, which is also tracking 25 large fires in eight states right now. Arizona, New Mexico, Florida, Utah, Oregon, Nevada, Wyoming, and California. Seven of those large fires are in Arizona, including the Telegraph Fire, which has burned more than 100,000 acres. There have been evacuations in parts of the state and in California, too. So many fires in so many places presents a significant challenge. The system of resources becomes strained when multiple regions are active, um, like we're starting to see already. Making things worse, drought and heat. The areas experiencing extreme drought are bracing for intense heat now, too. By the end of the week, more than 250 heat records could be tied, fueling the fire, literally. We reach a point across multiple western states where there's no matter how many we have, there's not enough fire engines to put one in every driveway. Britt Conway, KSAT 12 News. This morning, Southwest Airlines says it's resuming flight operations after computer network issues affected at least three airlines last night. The problems appeared overnight affecting flight operations at Southwest, Delta and Alaska Airlines. Southwest said it initially implemented ground stops at some airports because the issue prevented the airline from receiving weather information necessary to safely operate flights. But Southwest now says operations are resuming and it's working to get passengers to their destinations this morning. Both Delta and Alaska Airlines say the issue affected their booking sites and even their apps. Low income Americans can now register for the new child tax credit. The IRS now has a new online tool to help families who don't usually file tax returns register for the tax credit. The credit is only for the current tax year and is increasing to $3,600 for children under the age of six. It will be worth $3,000 for children ages six to 18. The IRS is also opening a second toll in a few weeks to let families opt out of receiving the advanced monthly payments, instead collecting the entire expanded credit at tax time. Well, Steph, the results are in. Broccoli, broccoli is officially the country's favorite vegetable. That's according to Green Giant's annual favorite veggie survey. Many of those questioned praised the taste of broccoli, saying it was the main factor in their selection. Carrots came in the runner-up, followed by corn. Tomatoes and cucumbers, which made the list last year, did not make the cut in 2021. The findings in the survey were based on more than 5,300 people between the ages of 18 and 72. Almost everybody under the age of 18 said, Ugh, broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's I think that's official. Put cheese on yes. it, it's great. Yeah. Lots, you, lots of cheese. You broccoli fan, Steph? Eh, Even if you just, okay. you know, in the, in the pan, boil broccoli real quickly and put a slice of cheese and put the lid on and yeah. I smell a segment on SA Live. Mm. All broccoli all day long. Well, what about you? Do you like I don't it? mind that at all. You Had some steamed it? broccoli this weekend. Very nice. Okay. Grill it sometimes too. That's good too. Gr grilling Stick it? it on the grill, yeah. Uh-huh. Till you yeah. scorch it and then <laughs> anyway, <laughs> 538, 76 degrees. And still ahead, a recall alert regarding some medical sleep aid devices from a popular brand. And now that the weather is warming up and heating up, you might find some rather weird creatures and insects crawling around your home or in area parks. We'll tell you what you should do if you find one of these creepy crawly things. Yeah, we've been having some visitors at our house, unwanted really? visitors. Yeah, little hmm? crawly things. Hmm. I'll be watching that segment as well. Taking a look outside with live cam, we're at 76 degrees right now. We'll be right back. 
541. Welcome back. You may be spending more time outdoors and at state parks during the summer months. But have you ever been exploring Mother Nature and had to do a double take? Our Sarah Costa shows us a creepy, slimy bug colony found at a Texas state park and what scientists are saying about it. Have you ever been enjoying the beauty of nature and then had that Ew, what is that moment? Well, one of those ew bug moments happened at a state park just southwest of Waco. And bug experts tell us what you should do if you spot these critters in your yard. It's creepy, it's crawly, it has eyes. What is it? These tiny creatures known as the larvae of fungus gnats were recently spotted at Mother Neff State Park in Moody, Texas. And according to Texas Parks and Wildlife officials, they're bad news for area plants. TPW officials said these larvae feed on fungi and decaying plant material, which can be damaging to young plants as they consume their roots. These critters are small flies, but once they emerge out of their larvae stage, they can resemble mosquitoes, according to Texas A&M University. Wildlife officials said these critters don't pose a threat to humans, but there are a few steps you can take if you spot them near your home to protect your plants. According to Texas A&M University, remove plant debris, old potting media, and any diseased plants from growing areas. These may become the source of future problems. Avoid using potting media containing organic matter that has not been completely composted. This could create ideal conditions for fungi gnat development and population buildup. Keep growing areas well drained and avoid overwatering moist conditions that are required for fungus gnat survival. Eliminating algae from underneath benches or other surfaces may also help reduce populations. Nature, it's beautiful. <laughs> to learn more about the fungus gnats, head to ksat.com. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Guys. <laughs> So Sarah never wanted to work at a zoo. No, or... I love that. She said, nature, it's beautiful. <laughs> it is. Very tongue in cheek. Yeah. 543, about 76 degrees. And from meat to lumber to flights, up next we'll look at why the price of everyday items continue to skyrocket. And welcome back. It's about 546. In your morning consumer headlines, millions of medical devices seen as life support for many are being recalled because of potentially toxic defect. Philips has issued a recall notification on millions of its sleep apnea and CPAP machines. The company says the recall affects several varieties of machines, including some Dream Station products. The problem is a foam in the machines that is used to soften the sound made by the machines. According to the company, the foam can deteriorate and project tiny particles and get gases that can irritate airways, cause headaches, and possibly be toxic or carry cancer risks. Phillips says no deaths have been reported, but as a precaution, patients should reach out to their doctors for more information. As many of us are now out and about uh, buying more and more stuff at stores, you may notice that things in, are getting more expensive. Yes, they are. CNN's Mary Maloney explains why. From beef <laughs> to home improvement, even airfare. As Americans begin opening up their stores and their wallets again, prices all around are rising along with increased demand. We've seen our meat prices uh, probably go up to record high levels right now because the demand is so strong with all our restaurants booming right now. So there's, there's been an unprecedented increase in, in uh, especially meat prices right now. In contrast to increased demand, a decrease in supplies. Many supply chains were interrupted during the pandemic, raising costs even further. When COVID-19 made it difficult for lumber mills to produce building supplies, new home prices and home improvement prices soared. The prices of, for, for fence materials in particular, posts, two by fours, pickets, They've all tripled. As those COVID restrictions lift, people are once again taking to the friendly skies in droves. But after dirt cheap prices in 2020, consumers are now being met with sticker shock as they book what AAA is calling their revenge travel. Delta CEO Ed Bastian says while the airlines are working to add more flights, costs could still go up. Go out and get your, hold your seats and get your, get your plans booked because uh, pricing will eventually start to respond to the, the big surge in demand. For Consumer Watch, I'm Mary Maloney. Yeah, I've heard people say when it comes to anything you see in stores or, or products in the grocery store or travel, buy it now. The prices may not come down anytime soon. If you see it, get it. That is true. Mm -hmm. we've, we've kind of been, I don't want to say trained to 
you know, to buy now after mm -hmm. what we've been through, but well, I, uh, I, I find myself doing it. I read another girl that said, we may not see airfares as low as we've seen again for a very, very long time, if ever again. I believe it. Mm -hmm. I believe it. Let's check traffic right now. 548, here is Mr. King. Hey, good morning, Mark. And Stephanie, still watching a situation in Kamau County. Those delays uh, seem to be fluctuating a bit. Traffic uh, moving, uh, but definitely slow as we head over here to the wall. Again, this is 35. Uh, this is the view from Ingle Road looking south. Uh, so that's what you're sort of seeing. There was some construction uh, there overnight. You can still see some uh, arrows and stuff, especially behind uh, these cars there. So you can see the cars uh, slowing down uh, here. So uh, these, uh, as I mentioned, fluctuating, see that went to the green there. So up to 60 miles per hour. We're still down to nine uh, miles per hour approaching that. So there's something to keep in mind this morning. If you're heading out, might want to plan some uh, extra time. Kind of unusual to see these kind of delays this morning. Uh, taking a look at how what that's doing to your travel time coming out of New Braunfels. 24 minutes now from New Braunfels to Loop 410 in San Antonio. 19 minutes the other direction. So a slight delay. And again, once you get past this area, uh, things do improve greatly. We'll have another update at the top of the hour, guys. We had three severe thunderstorms warnings popping up on our screens last night. And if you didn't get any storms, all you had to do was walk outside and maybe see yeah. this. Yeah, yeah though, you know, it is awfully pretty looking off in the distance when you see these huge storms that just start to billow up like that. And of course, quoting Mick Jagger and Keith Richards there. Uh, but yeah, and some of those were pretty nasty, especially around uh, Guadalupe County. Uh, some severe thunderstorm warnings were posted yesterday evening and some hefty downpours as well. And that was the exception. Most of us didn't really see anything. We're already one thing we are starting to see is a little bit of a, a glow of the early morning sunrise out there. A couple of clouds kind of hanging around. Here's the uh, water vapor imagery and what you can take away from this is the again clockwise flow. We have this flow coming in here out of the north. There's a high pressure area off to the west of us and that's why in this situation you get these little disturbances to kind of form up and they like to swing around on that northerly flow and that's going to be the situation again today with one or two of these um, showers thunderstorms popping up around the area computer model that's what this one is indicating as well just a few of them here and there again most of us aren't going to see any rain but if you do could have a couple of hefty downpours maybe even a stronger storm those will die down overnight and then tomorrow we will be doing it all over again maybe not quite the chance of rain but there'll still be one or two of them out there later on tomorrow and uh, here's the satellite and radar picture going back 12 hours and yeah there was nothing throughout the kind of early afternoon and then it was late afternoon those clouds started to billow up and there's the uh, severe storm going right through Seguin one more time looping right through there had a couple of uh, showers in downtown as well. All right, here we go down to the uh, south and to the southeast of us in the Bay of Campeche and nothing in the short term, but long term. The Hurricane Center says this is going to develop into something tropical, or at least about a 70% chance that this is going to develop into uh, something tropical. The path, however, everything right now has it going just about straight to the north, maybe a little bit toward the northeast. So it is going to be avoiding us as far as all the uh, the data as of right now. And the G whiz yesterday, we were looking at that system, and then it did develop into tropical storm, second tropical storm of the season. It's tropical storm bill, but as you can see, obviously that thing is just kind of sliding off off up into the uh, North Atlantic. So forecast today, a couple of clouds around here, call it partly cloudy skies, 90 at noon, and then we'll see a few clouds billowing up later on this afternoon. Some are going to be turning into some of those thunderstorms, maybe a couple of hefty downpours, a couple of stronger storms can't be ruled out. But again, that's going to be the exception few and far between out there. 95 high temperature. It will feel like the um, probably low hundreds, even though humidity is going to be dropping down when you get those temperatures getting up into the 95 degree range higher than that doesn't take much to really add on that heat index and that's going to be the situation throughout the rest of the week tomorrow and Thursday maybe again another stray shower thunderstorm and temperatures look like they're going to continue to heat up into the more like upper 90s going into the weekend and the first part of next week hot for Father's Day. It's going to be toasty on Father's Day. Yeah, that's sort of a gift. I guess if you're inside enjoying but if, you're, but, but if you're grilling, <laughs> oh. when in Rome, right? Yeah. And even, I mean, sometimes the air conditioning is having trouble keeping up. And yeah. You know, yes. ERCOT wants people to try and cut back just a little At bit. At least through Friday. Yeah. That's right.
Thank you guys. Right now, 553, about 76 degrees. Let's take a look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick 3888, Fireball 7, Daily 4, 5298, Fireball 2. Cash 5 numbers 14, 16, 18, 22, 24, Texas 2 step, 11, 20, 21, 29, with a bonus ball of 9. Coming up on GMA, I am at Lake Powell, and you can see this is a shipwreck that is muscle covered and really gives you the visual of the lake dropping. We've seen a nearly 40 foot drop from just last year. We're talking about severe drought, exceptional really, the highest level in Utah, more than 64% of the state. And we need to talk about what that means with water going forward. You'll see that and so much more coming up right here on GMA. Fiesta is set to kick off in just a few days. We've already launched our Fiesta theme newsletter. While the celebration is delayed and on a smaller scale, there are dozens of events still taking place. Our web team put together a list of activities. You can also expect a daily article every day. Fiesta takes place to break down the events of the day. This will be available online at ksat.com. Ahead in our next hour of GMSA today, an update on the mass shooting in Austin over the weekend. Another suspect now in custody. A massive fire to chemical plant forces evacuations in the state of Illinois. Have you seen this aerial video yet? We have details just ahead. And ERCOT announcing they are facing a strain on the state's power grid. Now Texans are being asked to conserve and reduce their electricity usage. Sarah Costa is standing by with a live report. Samuel King in for Stephen today. We're going to check in on I-35 at Ingle Road, and there is a whole lot of traffic out there right now. And they are definitely tapping the brakes going away from you at that camera angle. We have the very latest coming up, plus Mike's forecast. Stick around. You're watching GMSA. Some of the state power plants facing mysterious outages yesterday. Good morning, I'm Sarah Costa. Why ERCOT is asking Texans to conserve their electric use. And Texas fight. The Longhorns are headed to the College World Series. We've got a preview. Outside with live cam, just now waking up. A few of us saw showers and thunderstorms around the San Antonio metropolitan area yesterday. But look at your sunrise in progress. GMSA starts now. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. It is Tuesday, June 15th. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. And yesterday I was one of the few people who witnessed the showers. I didn't believe it. I was, you know, running around the house, putting things away. And I'm like, is that rain? It was <laughs> it a was. lot of rain. Some of those were downpours. Mike is here with more on that and a very active tropical setting out there. Yeah, things are starting to uh, get a little more active. Another tropical storm way off the Atlantic seaboard. No uh, concern there. But yeah, yeah, there was few and far between with those thunderstorms, but right around Seguin, they got a little bit nasty yesterday, and those showers decided to hold together and move right across basically downtown area. Again, most folks, though, didn't unfortunately see rain. Beautiful start this morning. There's the early morning glow of the sunrise and uh, not much of a heat index to deal with. As a matter of fact, we have dropped down into the uh, kind of, well, low 70s, we'll call it. Only 76 in uh, Stinson and Canyon Lake. The only two readings kind of just above 75 degrees. So that's encouraging out there. It's a little more comfortable when you step outside. Mold and pigweed are both on the low side. And uh, throughout the rest of the morning, temperatures will stay about where they are right now. And then we'll start the warming process, warm up fairly quickly. A couple of clouds around this morning. Then we'll see a few more developing in the afternoon. And then some of those are going to continue to build up and produce just one or two of those showers and thunderstorms. But if you do get one, well, first of all, consider yourself lucky to get a little bit of rain. And then some of those storms could be on the, the stronger side. That is a, a possibility. Although, like I said, once again, it's not going to be very, very widespread. The trend is going to stay hot and get hotter. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority and Samuel King, what is the latest, sir? Good morning, Mike. Just watching things here once again, 35 at Ingle Road, just south of Ingle Road out there in Comal County. Some construction overnight. We've got some lingering delays off and on here, so it's taking a slightly different view. So uh, once you see that light flashing there, that's where uh, you're having to move to get to a different lane there. So that's uh, causing a backup as well as uh, demand. So this is just giving us a wider view 
uh, of that situation we've been following uh, this morning. This was in the red just a short time ago. Now we're uh, in the orange there, so that's good. So not seeing sort of the dead stop traffic we were, but again, we'll continue to keep an eye on it. So that travel time out of New Braunfels was up about half an hour uh, just a short time ago. Now it's down to 27 minutes, 24 minutes if you're coming in from Bernie, 26 minutes from Bolverde on 281 into downtown San Antonio. And we'll have another update coming up. Mark, Stephanie. Thank you, sir. Now to our top story this morning. Texans being asked to immediately reduce their electricity usage. This comes as ERCOT announced they are facing a strain on the state power grid. Sarah Costa is live downtown. And Sarah, do we know why grid conditions are so tight? Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Well, yesterday, several power plants had mysterious outages, and that caused some strain on the state's power grid. Now, ERCOT predicted record demand, but with so many power plants coming offline unexpectedly, ERCOT put out a call for conservation. It's a request we often see in summer months, but ERCOT's vice president of grid planning and operations said, quote, this is unusual for the er for this early in the summer season, end quote. The grid operator noted they are seeing three to four times the amount of plants undergoing outages as activity fluctuates. More plants are expected to come back online throughout the week. Other sources of energy like wind and solar are also being monitored to keep up with demand. But ERCOT says it's still important to conserve power every day this week through Friday. ERCOT says they visited 20 plants so far and are expected to visit 11 more this week. Four of the plants they already visited are reported to be offline. So what can you do to help conserve? So you can set your thermostat to 78 degrees or higher, especially between 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. Every degree of cooling increases your energy use by 6 to 8 percent. Turn off lights and pool pumps and avoid using large appliances like ovens, washing machines and dryers. If you don't need something, ERCOT is asking you to turn it off and unplug it if possible. Now, ERCOT says if demand is does not decrease by the end of the week, their last resort are those controlled rolling power outages similar like the ones we saw in February. Live from downtown, I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. With the heat in play amid conservation efforts, the city is opening cooling centers. Today, some centers are set to open as early as 7 in the morning. They are going to be centers across the city open during various hours all week long. You can find the cooling center nearest you right now on KSET.com. You can also call 311 for more information. And if you need a ride via Metropolitan Transit offering free fare service to cooling centers beginning today, complimentary trips are available on any regular via, via link or via transit service for people who need a ride to a cooling center in their area. Passengers should tell the operator they're traveling to a city cooling center when they board. Via Trans customers will be allowed to make same day reservations for cooling center destinations only. To plan your trip, download the free Via Go Mobile app, visit viainfo.net or call 210-362-2020 for more information. City of San Antonio's Emergency Preparedness Committee is pushing the release of their winter storm response findings back next to next week as they work out the final parts of the report. In those findings, people will see recommendations the committee has, like addressing the statewide regulatory system, better communication with customers, and how to make sure there's an even spread should power outages occur. To develop uh, the outage system, sorry, the they call it an automated uh, system so that it works when we need to do this type of what they call load shed, this type of reduction in, in demand uh, to make sure it works equitably and, uh, and for them to be able to demonstrate that it works. Also in the findings, people will be able to see how the San Antonio water system responded to the winter storm and what that utility could do to improve. New this morning, cleanup is underway after an overnight fire on the city's southwest side. It happened at a cabinet and door making warehouse in the 200 block of Humble Avenue near South Zarzamora. Yesterday, employees there put out a small fire that started inside of a silo that collects sawdust. The employees smelled smoke again overnight and crews were called in to knock down hotspots. No one was hurt. The search for a man along the Guadalupe River has ended. Two bodies now pulled from that river. 30-year-old Victor Villanueva was found yesterday afternoon. 22-year-old Cassandra Kendrick's body was recovered on Sunday. Investigators say both were in the river trying to rescue two children who were swept away by the current. The children were rescued, rescued but Villanueva and Kendrick could not stay above the water. 
Two suspects now under arrest following that mass shooting in Austin over the weekend. Yesterday, 17 year old Jeremiah Tab was arrested in Colleen while enrolled in a summer class there. The first suspect described as a minor was arrested Sunday. 14 people were shot on 6th Street Saturday morning. One of those victims has now died. He's identified as 25 year old John Cantor visiting from New York. At last check, another victim was still listed in critical condition. In the heart of downtown San Antonio, there's a nightclub that's been a safe space for the LGBTQ plus community for the past 40 years. But the Bonham Exchange is more than just a spot for a fun night out. This week's episode of Case That Explains is all about the history and the legacy of the Bonham. And the man behind the iconic spot will stream the episode live on KSAT.com, the KSAT TV app, and streaming devices, and KSAT's Facebook page at 7 p.m. And if you can't watch it live, we're going to post the full episode so you can watch it on demand later Tuesday evening. Right now it is just about 6.09. We're at about 76 degrees. And get ready, Longhorn fans. Texas is headed to the College World Series. We're going to have a preview. Plus, changes could be coming to major websites you probably use every day. We'll have the details on that. And we'll be right back. And welcome back. It's about 612. Tech giants, including Amazon, Apple, Facebook, and Google, could be forced to make sweeping changes to their businesses under a series of new bills. Max Massey explains. The bipartisan legislation marks Congress's most significant push to date to reign in Silicon Valley. Now, in some cases, it actually takes direct aim at the tech giant's underlying business models. If successful, the legislation could force Google to stop promoting YouTube in its search results or prohibit Amazon from selling products on its marketplace that compete directly with third party selling listings. Now, Apple could be required to relax its restrictions on the iOS app developers and Facebook could be banned from acquiring companies for the purpose of stifling future rivals. The most aggressive of the five bills, which addresses concerns about tech giants using their control over multiple business lines to favor their own products or to suppress rivals, opens the door to breakups of the companies if they don't comply with the rules. Now, the bills do not specifically address certain companies, but virtually every legislative proposal seeks to respond to the findings of a 16-month investigation of the tech industry, and this was all conducted by the House Judiciary Committee's antitrust panel. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. 6.13, time for a look at morning sports. The Texas Longhorns headed to the College World Series for the 37th time. That's after being able to sweep South Florida in the NCAA Super Regional in Austin with Game 2 Sunday night at Dish Falk Field. Longhorns are set to take on Mississippi State on Sunday in Omaha. That game is set for a 6 p.m. start. Let's enjoy it today and back to work tomorrow. You know, this team's never satisfied and we know what we're capable of. This is just a, another uh, pit stop on a great journey that hopefully this team can cap off with the national championship. All right, so now we're waiting to see what happens in this next game. Uh, apparently there's a game coming up with Notre Dame as well. Good luck to the Longhorns this weekend. Missions are back at it tonight. This week, the missions stay at Wolf Stadium for another home series. This time, they welcome the Northwest Arkansas Naturals to town. Series runs tomorrow through Sunday. It's also $2 Tuesday at Wolf Stadium. It means $2 parking, $2 reserve tickets, domestic beer, pizza, and more. Time for a look at boxing. San Antonio's Mario Barrios will fame Gervonta Davis in two weeks. And Showtime Network just aired the first episode on both fighters with all access. You could immediately tell the difference for some viewers between the hype of Davis compared to the humbleness of Barrios. And this haven for the San Antonio native also presents a stark contrast to Sin City's excess. That looks like a Texas steak. Red meat day. Hey, red meat day. Let's get it. <laughs> I like nice things also, you know, I like name brand stuff, I, I like jewelry, but at the end of the day, you know, that, that stuff, it, it doesn't define me as, as a person. If that's what defines him, then, you know, that's, I mean, but, you know, that, that's cool, but I'm a lot more than, you know, just, you know, materialistic items. No, I, Mario I knows he's a, he's a professional, huh, Mario? Yeah. That's good right here? Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. I got a lot of people around me that keep me very grounded. Coming from nothing, pretty much, I've been able to give you know myself and my family a life that I never thought that I'll, I'll be able to live. 
Episode two of All Access, Davis versus Barrios, comes out Saturday at 7 p.m. The pay-per-view price will be $69.99 for the June 26th title fight. And for now, traffic is building up there at I-35 and Watson. Yeah, it's a mess. Here's Samuel King with the latest. Yeah, we have a crash uh, reported here, uh, Stephanie and Mark, and moving the trans guide uh, camera there just to give you an idea. But this is northbound on 35 at Watson Lane. You can see the emergency vehicles and ambulances. Take a closer look at this here uh, at the <coughs> wall as they're adjusting the Ooh. camera over there at uh, trans guide uh, this morning and you can kind of see let's let them pan around here so you're going to see the backup there there we go and so you saw the initial cause of the backup and now you're seeing uh, that backup here so this is just going to be something to uh, keep in mind uh, this morning if you're heading northbound again from watson so if you're heading up to maybe san marcus or austin uh, this morning you're going to run into this so uh, watch that and we'll take a look at that at the map you can see the icon just popping up here down to six miles per hour as you saw there uh, looking at uh, other areas here 28 minutes coming in from pleasanton 19 minutes from castroville and us 90 16 minutes on 35 from Lytle and there, there is the big map, but still once you get south of uh, New Braunfels, we were telling you about that Ingle Road uh, situation that seems to be getting improving. There are some delays there, but not as bad as what you're going to see now north of New Braunfels heading northbound. We continue to keep an eye on that this morning, guys. A lot of problems. Thank you, Samuel. Big Thank shout you. out to those folks at the uh, trans guy too for panning yes. that camera around for you. Yes. Yeah, they are definitely our it. ally in the morning. Yeah. Appreciate <laughs> yeah. that. Mm -hmm. It's hot oh, and yeah, it's it going to get hotter as well. Now, temperatures this morning really aren't that far. Normal low temperature average is 73, so we're at 74 right now. Not too bad. We really don't have a heat index to deal with for the moment. Uh, yeah, there is some humidity out there. You notice it when you step outside. Mostly sunny later on today. A couple of those thunderstorms going to be popping up once again, like was the case yesterday. Most of us aren't going to be seeing any rain and then uh, looking to the week ahead. It's going to stay hot. I'm going to have a couple of showers and thunderstorms tomorrow, next day, and then it's going to be getting hotter as we go on in toward the weekend. So we're looking at, uh, well, for the short term, mid 90s, and then it's going to be mid and upperish 90s. All right, take a look at this picture. This is absolutely gorgeous. Almost looks like something out of a sci fi movie, but this is right around uh, Alleytown and just after the storms passing over quote an old hymn, but gorgeous out there. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. All right, we are starting off. There's uh, just a few clouds along the horizon. Otherwise, a lot of clear skies. Very tranquil picture as of right now. And this is a great view with the water vapor imagery. And it, it also or usually kind of shows a lot more than the uh, the satellite picture does. I kind of think of it almost like an X-ray, if you will, of the atmosphere. It shows all the little nuances here and all the, the lows and the highs. And as you can see, got a big area of high pressure right here, just about centered about four corners area. And then the low in behind it, that big trough out to the northwest. This is what's really in control of our weather right now. A lot of times in the summertime, that high is off to the east of us and we get that flow continuing to come off the Gulf of Mexico. Well, in this situation, we get the northerly flow and that's what is taking these little disturbances like we had yesterday and will be the case today throwing them in here afternoon heating. We get some of those showers and thunderstorms to uh, to pop up and that's what uh, computer models are indicating going to be and this is that broad brush models. I like to describe it so it's not everywhere. Uh, it's just going to be, you know, popping up here and there and that'll be the situation tomorrow afternoon as well. One or two of those showers out there. Most of us won't see rain, but if you do get one of those thunderstorms could have a decent downpour and maybe on the, the stronger side. All right, down to the south Hurricane Center, of course, is watching that disturbance there in the Bay of Campeche and says short term. Probably not anything longer term, three to five days getting to be a, a better chance of developing into a tropical system. However, most all computer models do have it continuing well off to the east of us. So as far as any rain, really nothing from that. Uh, there could be a few showers well off in the eastern portion of the state over there by Houston, and that would be that would be it. Otherwise, it's going to continue up well up to the east over there around, uh, say, Louisiana, Mississippi, and going in toward uh, southeastern United States. So that won't have any impact on us. And of course, there is Tropical Storm Bill, which is off the North, uh, North Atlantic coast right now, but that's moving off into the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. 90 today at noon, partly cloudy skies and high temperature today. 95, mostly sunny. We'll see some more of those clouds popping up this afternoon. 
A couple of those are going to turn into a few thunderstorms around, very few and far between, but you might have a decent downpour and some could be potentially on the stronger side. Tomorrow, about the same situation. And Thursday as well, maybe a little bit lesser chance for a uh, shower or thunderstorm. And then, like I said, temperatures are going to start to go up a couple of notches here and there going into the weekend and the first of next week. We're going to 97 by Monday. Mm hmm. Yeah. With summer solstice Sunday. Yes. Late Temp Sunday. Temperatures getting a little more officially summer like as we go into next week. Right. Days get shorter after that. Huh. Yes. And Father's Day on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh, really? <laughs> yes. It's the first time we've talked oh. about that this yes. week. Yes, I just yeah. wanted to remind you. <laughs> Thanks for mentioning that, Steph. She's so sweet, isn't she? Yeah. I can't wait to see what she I gets. I forgot us. all about that. Oh. 621, about 76 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, Verizon wants to re reward its customers for getting vaccinated for coronavirus. We're going to have the details. For asthma, there's primatine mist. When symptoms strike, your airways narrow and there's less breathing room. Primatine mist is clinically shown to open airways quickly. Get the number one FDA approved over-the-counter asthma inhaler and breathe easy again. It's very common to have both sensitivity and gum issues. Dentists and hygienists will want to recommend Sensodyne sensitivity and gum. Do you get the sensitivity relief as well as improved gum health? All in one. My cholesterol is borderline. I figure I can worry about it or do something about it. Garlic helps maintain healthy cholesterol safely and naturally. It's odor and taste free with guaranteed potency. I'm taking charge of my cholesterol with garlic. We asked women to try Dove Even Tone Antiperspirant for 21 days. Oh my God, that's such a big difference. It looks a little bit more like it's all one color. It looks good. Help restore underarm skin to its natural tone. Dove Even Tone Antiperspirant. In this morning's GMA First Look, the FBI is investigating that scare in the air when an off-duty flight attendant on leave allegedly threatened to take down the plane. The FBI looking at this new video as passengers and crew members restrained 34-year-old Stefan Jamar Duncan, who's accused of making terroristic threats and assaulting two flight attendants. The FAA now telling ABC News it has received more than 3,000 reports of unruly passengers on planes. The over overwhelming majority are passengers refusing to wear a mask. We're on course in this year to have almost as many events as we have seen of unruly passengers in the entire course of aviation. And coming up at 7 a.m., an ABC News exclusive. George Stephanopoulos goes one on one with the CEO of Delta in a live interview. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. Verizon is the latest company to reward Americans for getting vaccinated. Starting today, customers can get a 10% discount on accessories at Verizon stores or its website. They just have to complete an online questionnaire confirming they've received their COVID shot. No proof is required. 626, about 76 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, stunning video shows a massive chemical plant fire that forced evacuations in Illinois. And we've had some problems on the roads this morning. Take a look at your screen for Exhibit A. Look at that backlog of traffic right now. We also have this incident, 35 Watson Lane. Samuel King is going to get us all up to speed on your morning commute after the break. President Biden wraps up his first NATO summit in Brussels. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting in Washington. Coming up, what to expect from the upcoming sit down with Russian President Vladimir Putin. Evacuations underway in the Midwest following a massive explosion at a chemical plant. We're going to have the latest. Outside with live cam, things look great there on 410. It's a, been a beautiful sunrise. Uh, parts of the roads right now are a mess. We'll get details coming up with Samuel King. We've got some big backlogs out there right now, but it is Tuesday. It is June 15th. Good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. Yes, good morning. Hope you had a, a good Monday. Uh, some people got showers. I did, but I don't think you did. did nope. You? Mm -mm. Yeah. I saw the clouds billowing, but Mike has more on those. Apparently everything started to yeah. die down pretty quickly last night. Yeah, once the sun went down and uh, so we don't live too far from each other. I 
I think it slept through. I don't know if I had rain in my house or not. I, I think was, I was up later than you. Probably. I was sawing logs, but yeah, some, <laughs> a lot of folks did not see rain, or I should say most everybody mm -hmm. did not see rain. Uh, there was those a uh, couple of uh, storms, especially one that moved through Seguin, and that did become severe just after dinner time last night. Some uh, hefty downpours, and yeah, then everything cleared out quite nicely. Now it's a very, very nice start, and actually temperatures are cooler. Is that the right word to use cooler? Not as hot as where they've been in the morning hours the past couple of mornings. We're at 74 right now. 73s Randolph, Port SA, as well as Holotus and 60s out there in the hill country. And uh, the humidity is also on the tolerable side. Mold pigweed are both low this morning and throughout the uh, rest of the morning. Warm and, you know, it's humid enough out there, but not ridiculous humidity and throughout the rest of the afternoon then a couple of those thunderstorms are going to be popping up again very few and far between most of us won't see anything and then tomorrow pretty much more of the same uh, it'll be okay in the morning one or two thunderstorms in the afternoon Thursday yeah maybe then going into the weekend it is hot and looks like things are going to be getting hotter as we head in toward the weekend details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes traffic authority Samuel King and yeah there's that huge problem out there right yeah this is a I 35 this is a view uh, from Watson Lane on Transguide I understand it's a pretty uh, serious crash here earlier and it is causing some uh, major traffic backups as we head over here uh, to the wall just want to give you a look first at sort of where uh, actually what's going on in, in this area so you can see traffic down to one lane at least it, it is moving uh, there uh, but it's some sort of collision there and we're trying to get some more information throughout uh, the morning here's how that looks on the map so you can see those delays building again northbound so this is just north uh, of New Braunfels traffic down to three to five miles per hour other parts of the area do look OK. So once you get south of New Braunfels, still have that sort of issue uh, there near Ingle. But other than that, things looking fine. 27 minutes coming in uh, southbound into downtown San Antonio, 24 minutes on I-10 coming in from Bernie. But again, uh, sort of this is a situation 35 at Watson following a major crash. I'll give you another view of the traffic backup here. There we go, 35 at uh, Kohlenberg. So you can kind of uh, see what that's doing. So that's really affecting you if you're north of New Braunfels, if you're going to head up to Austin or uh, San Marcos this morning, uh, this is something that you're going to run into. So keep that in mind. You might want to start heading out now and, and find some alternate routes. And we'll have some more on this situation coming up in a few minutes. Mark, Stephanie. Thank you, Sam. You'll new this morning. The Wilson County Sheriff says he is disappointed after a deputy was arrested on gun and felony DWI charges. 34 year old Deputy Toro Bio Toby Garcia was arrested on Memorial Day down in Corpus Christi. The Wilson County Sheriff says Garcia has been on administrative leave since the agency found out about his arrest and relieved of duties during the investigation. Garcia has worked for the Wilson County Sheriff's Office since 2009. The Texas Juvenile Justice Department is looking for a teen that climbed a wall and ran away from the Dell Children's Medical Center in Austin. 16 year old Eric Robinson escaped yesterday evening just before seven. He was receiving care there. Robinson has scars on his body and he was last seen wearing a gray Adidas sweatsuit. If you see him, you are asked to call 911. Looking for a COVID-19 vaccine? More pop-up clinics will be opening this morning to help provide access. First clinic will open up at 10 at the First Church of the Nazarene. We have a full list of all those clinics on our website at ksat.com. 6.34 now to a deadly shooting at a Georgia supermarket where law enforcement says a gunman refused to wear a face mask. It comes as we learn more about a rise in COVID infections in several states, just as a more dangerous variant of the virus takes root. ABC's Faith Abube has the latest. This morning, police in Georgia investigating a deadly dispute over a mask. I don't know what the world is coming to, period. They say a customer opened fire at this grocery store near Atlanta when a cashier asked him to cover his face. The gunfire leaving the cashier dead and a deputy and the store security guard wounded. From supermarkets to airplanes, fights over mask requirements have been growing more frequently. The FAA has received more than 3,000 reports of unruly passengers on planes this year. It says the overwhelming majority have been passengers refusing to wear a mask. 
The mask mandate is in place for a reason. It's in place because not everyone who boards a plane can get vaccinated yet. Today, California is dropping its mask and social distancing mandates for vaccinated people as cases decline in most of the country. But COVID infections are still rising in these eight states. According to the CDC, the vaccination rate in all of these states, except Hawaii, is below the national average. It comes as health officials grow increasingly worried about a more dangerous variant of the coronavirus, known as Delta, first seen in India. It now accounts for nearly 10 percent of COVID cases in the U.S. The Delta variant so serious, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has now delayed the U.K.'s reopening plans. The good news? Doctors say the vaccines offer significant protection against the variant. Faith Abube, ABC News, New York. New this morning, a man who was evicted from his San Antonio home now has even bigger problems. He's facing criminal charges accused of trying to burn down the home and assaulting someone with a sledgehammer. Our Katrina Weber is live at Public Safety Headquarters with more on the arrest. And Katrina, we understand the case involves investigations by SAPD and the fire department's arson unit. Well, that's right. Arson investigators handled the fire portion of this case while police looked into the alleged assault and robbery. Now, all of this added up to the arrest last night of 24-year-old Kevin Rodriguez. This stems from that incident, which happened last Wednesday, a fire at a home on the east side in the 500 block of Morning View. The arrest affidavit says that Rodriguez was evicted from the home by a roommate, then allegedly tried to set fire to it in retaliation. It says another man was recording the whole thing on his cell phone. Rodriguez is accused of stealing that man's phone after kicking and hitting him on his arm with a sledgehammer. A paramedics had to be called to treat that man for his injuries. The damage to the home appears to be relatively minor. The affidavit, though, says although Rodriguez was gone when police arrived, they did track him down, and that was with help from witnesses who were able to identify him. Reporting live from Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina. This morning, President Biden in Brussels wrapping up his meeting with NATO leaders. Their talk centered on threats posed by China and Russia. Those talks wrapping up just one day before President Biden's high stake sit down with Russia's President Vladimir Putin. ABC's Ike Ajachi is in Washington this morning with the latest. President Biden reaffirming America's commitment to the leaders of NATO. Everyone in that room today understood the shared appreciation, quite frankly, that America is back. In Brussels, the president with NATO leaders discussing several topics, including climate change, China, and Russia. President Biden calling the day productive, a stark contrast to the contentious NATO meetings during the Trump administration. The former president threatening to pull out of NATO, calling it obsolete. NATO leaders eager to listen to Biden's approach. When we stand together, we can overcome any threat to our security. Overnight, the allied nations releasing a joint statement, naming China a new security threat, calling out its assertive behavior. Another pressing threat, Russia. President Biden preparing to meet Putin Wednesday in Geneva, calling him a worthy adversary. Biden speaking with NATO leaders who expressed their support. Every world leader here thanked me for meeting with Putin now. President Biden planning to discuss several issues, including Putin's election meddling and the recent cyber attacks originating in Russia. I'm going to make clear to President Putin that there are areas where we can't cooperate if he chooses. And if he chooses not to cooperate and acts in a way that he has in the past relative to cybersecurity and some other activities, then we will respond. We will respond in kind. According to Axios, President Biden was advised by a group of Russia experts on both sides of the aisle not to hold a joint press conference so that Putin won't have the opportunity to upstage their private talks. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Washington. Emergency crews are battling massive fires at a chemical plant that triggered explosions in northern Illinois. Have you seen this video yet? The uh, fires triggered huge fireballs and sent thick 
plumes of black smoke into the air, forcing an evacuation of residents and businesses near Stockton. There is one of those fireballs. Around 1,000 people were affected, but there have been no reports of injuries, and the company says everyone on site is safe and accounted for. The plant in question manufactures grease products, lubricants, and other fluids. And time now at 640 and about 75 degrees right now. Still ahead on GMSA, what you need to know about travel insurance before you book that summer trip. Introducing your 2021 Fiesta Royalty, powered by your local San Antonio area Chevy dealers. Meet the San Antonio Chato Association's reigning queen of 2021, Alexa Primera. She is a member of their Escaramuza team. Basically what we do is we, we're like kind of like a drill team. There's eight girls like involved in the team where we're inside of, the, of this arena, like a circled arena, and we ride side saddle. Um, and we do like a routine. It's kind of like synchronized swimming, but on courses. She takes her duties as Chato Queen seriously and is honored to be an ambassador of the San Antonio Chato Association, the oldest in the nation. It's, it's such an honor. Like I'm super excited to be a part of this and being able to like, explain and express my culture and what this whole charreada, like what it's all about. The Fiesta events she looks forward to are all the coronations of Fiesta royalty, but the one event she's most excited about is the day in Old Mexico at the Chato Ranch. A day in Old Mexico is a Mexican rodeo. It's where um, the Charros and Escaramuzas come to perform for their audience. And when she is away from the Chato Ranch, she enjoys the outdoors, drawing and swimming. But most of the time, you'll find her with her horse. My horse, her name's Mora. She's, uh, she's a gray, she's a mare. Uh, yeah, we're, we're super close. I mean, I do everything. I have to saddle, I, have, I bathe her, I feed her. I have to come here every day to, to I mean, give, it, give her attention because she's an animal. I mean, she has to come out. She can't just stay in her stable all day. And welcome back. It's about 645. Americans are traveling again, both in the U.S. and overseas, but the global COVID-19 pandemic still presents health risks. Because of the risk involved, the travel industry is seeing a surge in the popularity of travel insurance. Travel insurance policies can cover anything from damage to rental vehicles to lost luggage, but travel pros say take time to read the fine print to find out what is specifically covered. And there are other ways to protect yourself while traveling, especially if you're overseas and need medical care or a stay in a hospital. MedJet provides medical transportation by air for members. Service has a variety of membership options covering international and domestic travel. Some short-term membership plans are just $99. Some annual memberships as low as $295. And if you're a member hospitalized in the U.S. or abroad and 150 miles or more from home, MedJet arranges a medical transportation to the hospital of your choice in your home country. Let's check traffic at just about 647. Mr. King? Good morning, Mark. And Stephanie, still watching this situation in Comal County, 35 at Watson. At 35, there had been a shut down at this immediate area here. So you head over to uh, the wall, but it looks like they've reopened it at least to one lane of traffic. Major uh, collision here, investigation working to get some more uh, information on what happened here and whether uh, there are indeed any uh, injuries or serious injuries there, but certainly a ser uh, definitely a serious situation uh, in this area. So again, uh, 35 at Kohlenberg is where the accident was reported you can see the backup at least uh, three miles. Uh, so that is going to definitely impact your trip. If you're going to uh, head, if you're heading north of New Braunfels, maybe to uh, San Marcos or Austin, uh, might want to head over to I-10 to 123, take that up uh, to San Marcos, and that will get you around the situation on 35 uh, right now. So here is the situation. You're really not seeing the backup with this view. This view shows you the backup here. This is 35 at Kohlenberg Road. Again, uh, as we mentioned, about uh, three miles at least here north of New Braunfels this morning. So again, uh, use maybe that alternate route if you're, you're if you're heading north uh, out of there. Go over, take I-10-123. That should get you around this. But of course, that's going to build as well. We'll continue to keep an eye on it throughout the morning, guys.
that's painful just looking at the pictures from, and that's all the construction up there uh, in that area too so all right thank you very much sam <laughs> this is not a pretty sight look at this thermometer was what at about oh just roughly 100 yesterday in seguin um blue skies obviously not when those uh, thunderstorms moved on through here, but that is going to be the trend for temperatures to start to go up as we go in toward the weekend. Nice sunrise this morning. Lots of uh, clear skies out there and uh, computer model later on this afternoon. Once again, has a couple of those showers and thunderstorms just kind of popping up scattered about the area. Most of us won't see any rain, but if you do could have a decent downpour, which wouldn't be too bad and maybe uh, potentially a stronger thunderstorm as well. Here's the uh, satellite radar picture over the past 12 hours and again here was the thunderstorm that moved through that produced a severe storm there in Seguin and then just moved to uh, sort of weakened a little bit moved through town about uh, just after dinner time last night down to the southeast of us and again keep mentioning how the hurricane center is watching this area here nothing in the short term but long term three to five days toward the end of the week and the weekend there is a good chance according to the hurricane center that this is going to be developing to a tropical system but but the path is not going to be heading toward us. Speaking of tropical, there is tropical storm, second one of the season. Bill just moving out in toward the North Atlantic. Back home, here is another computer model that first of all shows a couple of scattered showers around the area today and tomorrow probably the same situation. Now going further out into the Gulf of Mexico and going on into further into time. Here's the system down there as this continues to work its way up to the north. And that's the path that this as of right now is going to be taking primarily up to the north. It will be a big rain producer out here in the Gulf of Mexico and then in the Gulf Coast right around um, Panhandle of Florida, Louisiana, well off to the east of us. If there's a wraparound shower, maybe around Houston, that looks like it's going to be pretty much the extent of it. And on the back side of this, this is going to have the only, I guess you could say, indirect effect is the fact that the air is going to be sinking on the back side of that thing. So that's what's going to help to heat us up as we go in toward the weekend. So forecast today, going to make it up to 90 at noon. We'll have a lot of clear skies this morning. One or two clouds are going to start to pop up. We'll see a few more clouds this afternoon. A few of those uh, thunderstorms are going to be developing later on this afternoon. They'll be few and far between, but maybe a decent downpour and perhaps even a stronger storm. And 95 will feel more like uh, just about 100 or even into the low hundreds. Same thing throughout the rest of the week. A couple of thunderstorms the next couple of days are possible. And then the weekend, we're looking at leaning toward the upper-ish 90s going into Sunday and Monday. And of course, summer officially begins late Sunday evening, so the days will get shorter. Yes, Not they will. enough, but... <laughs> In a while. Yeah. Yeah. Mike, you'll be proud of me. I reminded Justin to put his Father's Day graphic. Oh, you did? I did you yesterday. Did yesterday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Reminding everybody that it's Father's Day. We have bow tie consistency going now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mike. Right now, it's just about 651. Learn the backstory on some local murals in a new series called If These Walls Could Talk. I'm Katrina Weber. That's coming up tomorrow on GMSA. And outside with live cam, the news you need to know before you go is coming up next. Another important look at traffic trouble spots with our expert Samuel King. Stick around. Welcome back, everybody. 655. Before you go, I want to give you an update here. The situation on I-35 in Comal County, north of New Braunfels. This is 35 of Colenburg. You can see uh, traffic there at a standstill following a crash earlier this morning here. This is the view. 35 and Watson showing you the situation. At least one uh, lane moving right now, so that's a good thing. But this backup still about four miles. So to get around it, if you're heading north to San Marcos or to Austin, uh, might want to, if you're coming out of uh, San Antonio, head over to I-10, take a 123 or this toll road up to San Marcos and head up that way to avoid that backup. That's going to really slow you down. Otherwise, travel time's looking fairly normal, including 28 minutes coming in from New Braunfels, Mike, this morning. Thank you, sir. Lots of sunshine uh, right now, and it's going to be another hot one. 90 at noon, 95 high temperature today, and a, one or two of those thunderstorms are going to pop up, kind of like what we saw yesterday, maybe a decent downpour, perhaps a, a stronger uh, storm on top of that. And looks like things are just going to start to heat up as we head in toward the weekend. Samuel, Mike, thank you very much, guys. Have a great day and prepare for that heat. See you back here at 9.